This time on ECRN Garage, we're going to go over how to install the Moto Gadget wire by wire that uh, I did on the chopper. And here's my heater. It's so cold out here in minus 13 at, in Halifax County. I had to put the heat on to my whiteboard because the dry erase markers wouldn't even write on it. So it's going to be a, a little slow process trying to get this video done, but uh, I'll just start today. I might do this in a few parts. So this first first part will be how to hook up the Moto, Moto Gadget to the battery. We're just going to do this step by step so there's not so many wires on the board at one time so you can see wire by wire how exactly I did it. So uh, hopefully we don't uh, freeze our fingertips off. Wipe the, the boogers off my mustache because it's so freaking cold out here. I got my dry erase marker warming up down by the heater so we'll draw the moto gadget box just a rectangle two terminals g and d and b a t t i believe and then i'll just draw a little battery down here a plus and a minus so our ground i should have did that the other way what a mess this is why I'm not a professional. Bear with me. Even the, to wipe this off, my my uh, eraser doesn't work. I'd have to use alcohol in, a, in one of my chamois. So this will be the negative, positive. So, well, <laughs> I did it again. Dummy. All right. I guess I could have just turned this to a positive, that to a negative. So our ground wire is going to be a number 16 ground according to the documentation. I did mine black and red so all the blacks are grounds as much as I can do and the reds will be hot. So the positive will go through a fuse to the positive and it's going to be a number 10 wire so you don't melt anything down. Um, you might have a bike that draws more or less for the starter but we'll get into that but for the basic setup uh, number 10 wire through a 40 amp fuse keep things from melting down and it's going to be a number 16 AWG size wire for your ground wire just to power up the moto gadget unit so next uh, I'll race all that off and we'll look at the starting system so the next system we're going to draw up is uh, just powering on the M unit. So we'll draw the M unit up here again. In the back. There. So on this side it's all inputs. On this side it's out. And we're going to be dealing with the lock input. Here, and we'll draw the battery again. Plus, minus. <clears throat> so we're going to be taking a wire through a switch and into the lock from the plus side of the battery. And it's going to be a number 16. And it's number 16 gauge. And in my chart, it's a it's red 30. And of course this goes to chassis ground like everything else <coughs> and also there's one oops did that wrong and there's also one that goes to the minus so we'll just have these in our mind that the bad these two the ground and the battery are connected to the battery already and the chassis ground and negative on the battery as well so it's all connected just to simplify so you can just see the different pieces of the circuit so <clears throat> when you turn the key we have it hooked to a key turn the key on the mode gadget starts up through the input it just lets power go through and then it goes out the ground back to the battery it's all connected and your moto gadget unit lights up and powers on it'll cycle through all the lights will come on and if everything's working or if anything's activated, that light will light up. 
It might sound a bit complicated. I've done this a quite a bit, of t quite a few times, just trying to learn how to figure this thing out. So it's uh, I'm just the step by step. Hopefully, it won't be too too confusing. So the next part of this. So now this will just turn on the unit. So we'll just hook up the we'll rig up the starter and see if I can get. Actually, let's do this whole thing. Like I said, my razor doesn't even work. It's so friggin' cold out here. The little propane propane heater I have down there is uh, keeping this from being too washed out with the marker and the ink. And I got the marker in my pocket keeping it warm. I'll make this a little bigger. Oh yeah, it didn't dry out enough. This is a pain in the ass. All right. So we got our inputs and our outputs. And then we got our minus and our plus. So we're gonna be dealing with the starter. We're gonna be dealing with these two outputs, which are under the start heading on the unit. So here's our starter motor. Here's our solenoid switch on top, which has a post and another post that goes to chassis ground. The motor has a post and goes to chassis ground as well, usually through the bolts and the starter or whatever. And we'll draw our battery again, minus plus, and our battery main battery cable, this is the big one, is going to chassis ground and it's going to be a number four AWG and our starter we have from the positive going to the motor and it's also a number four AWG so now from the sol for the solenoid switch we have there's two start terminals and I brought two number 14's down to the start solenoid. The so number 14 times two and I didn't mark a color or a, they were, it's red but I didn't give it a number because it was really close on the actual bike so it's not marked at all. So there's all our basic wires for that for the starter. So. Once the power's keyed on from our from the last part with the ignition, the start button on the input is start here. I'm gonna it goes to a starter switch. I'm just gonna make my switches all like this. And then all the switches go to chassis ground. So this here is a number 14 AWG and it's a white it's white number 20 in my chart you push your button the uh, <coughs> moto gadget mu it picks it up that there's a signal it so it closes its internal relays sends power down to the start outputs Closes the solenoid switch, which activate closes the switch that makes the motor <coughs> current flow through and spins up. And hopefully that doesn't sound too confusing. Anyway, so that's the basic starter starting system for the M unit on this old Harley. The next item we're going to tackle is the the signal lights. So we'll draw our the gadget M unit again. So, I'm not going to bother draw the uh, connections for the power it's already done with. I'll just draw in the orientation. So this is our inputs and our outputs. And we're going to focus on um, two inputs and two outputs. So we've got turn R for right turn signal and turn 
L for the left. And same thing here. Turn right and turn left on the other side for our output. So we have our handlebar switch up here. So we're going to go from our motor gadget up to our switch. And that goes to chassis ground. And it could be in one handlebar switch, it could be in two separate ones, it really doesn't matter. And for our left turn signal, we'll go up to our left turn switch, however we choose to do it. And that goes to chassis ground on the other side of the switch. It's not like a normal light where the, where the switches feed the lights directly. These just feed the, the M unit, which triggers the relays to turn on the output. So once you get your head wrapped around that the switches are just momentary, they're carrying no current. So you can use the smaller wires, but I've used all number 16, um, AWG, and all the input wires because they're all super low current. And the turn right input number is uh, it's going to be red 43 on my chart, and the turn left is going to be white 45 on my chart. So on the output side, so we're going to go from the output side and split off into two lights. We'll just use this symbol for our lights and then they're going to continue on to chassis ground. So it's going to be our front signal light and our rear signal light for the right hand side. And the, <coughs> the color code for that is red 37 in my chart. So you just take a wire from the motor gadget you can split it, join it, you can bring two wires back and put them under there if you wish. And then bring one to the light, and then from out of the light to ground, chassis ground, into the front. However you choose to do that. Same thing with the left. You split it. So we got our rear light, and our front signal light on the left hand side, going to chassis ground. Same thing again. And the colors for these are white 38 in my chart for the left hand side. And you can say bring the two back if you wish. So that's how this goes. Basically, you turn your signal light switch on. And for the left turn, the motor gadget sees that you've activated, closes the relay. Uh, the output power feeds to <coughs> the left front and left rear to chassis ground and you can set these up to blink continuously, come on for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, depends how you set them up. I just basically do it, um, if they stay on until you shut them off. Or if you hit them both at the same time, in this motor gadget unit, you can have four way flashers. So it'll flash all four like for hazards and to cancel them you just hit any one. So hopefully this uh, this isn't too confusing, it's a pretty basic system, but let's say once you get your head wrapped around that all your switches and inputs are just momentary, not carrying current, they're not actually turning on the lights directly. The motor gadget turns everything on and off um, using the circuitry. So next we'll probably work on the headlight and taillight.